Hello mate! I tried my best at a British accent because in this video we will design a circuit that would appeal to Detective Sherlock Holmes, a sequence detector. The design process for this sequential circuit will be the same as what we saw with the vending machine examples. As such, I will move relatively quickly through the procedure, but focus most of my attention on the new aspect to this design, which is the state diagram. Our given task is to design a Mealy circuit that outputs high if and only if the most four recent inputs are 0, 1, 1, 0. Multiple sequences are allowed to overlap. Let's explain what this means with a simple table. Think of each vertical line as a positive clock edge. In between these edges, I can flip the input switch, let's call it X, to either 0 or 1. For this example, do you see any instances of the desired sequence 0, 1, 1, 0? It actually occurs two times, once after the first four bits, and then again three bits later. As such, the output signal will be high at those two points in time. This middle zero actually overlaps between those sequences, serving as the final zero of the first sequence, and the starting zero of the second sequence. This overlap is allowed only because of the second bullet point in the problem statement. If we change this word can to cannot, then the second sequence would not be valid, but that is for a different design. Now let's try to draw the state diagram for this machine. Since there are four bits in the sequence, there will be four states in the diagram for this Mealy machine. A Moore machine would require one more state. Let's name those states A, B, C, and D. State A represents starting from scratch. State D represents being at the cusp of completing the sequence, but we still need that final zero to complete it. I recommend first drawing the arrows used to successfully complete the sequence. Starting from A, an input of zero is a successful first step, so we move to B. From there, a 1 moves us to C. From there, another 1 moves us to D. Finally, a 0 will complete the sequence, which is why I place a star next to that arrow. But that last arrow looks a little strange, doesn't it? Why does it point to state B, even though the pattern so far suggests it should go to A? That's because this is the overlap 0. It completes the first sequence, thus the star, and it is a successful first step for the second sequence, thus skipping state A. With that idea, let's more clearly define the meaning of these states. State A means that no recent inputs look like the desired sequence. State B means that the one most recent input has been the starting zero. State C means that the two most recent inputs have been 0, 1. State D means that the three most recent inputs have been 0, 1, 1. With this in mind, try to complete the state diagram on your own. Pause the video while you do. Here is the completed state diagram. The black sequential numbers were explained previously, so let's focus on the red numbers, which represent non-sequential inputs. If we're at the beginning and don't plug in a zero, then we are stuck at the beginning. A loops back to A with an input of 1. If we're at B and plug in a zero, you might think this puts us all the way back to the start. Not true. Remember that we just defined state B as indicating we have begun the sequence with a zero. So that most recent zero starts a new sequence and keeps the state at B. Similarly, inputting a zero at state C returns us to state B. We made a couple accurate steps to get up to state C, but then this input of zero cuts off the old sequence and begins a new sequence. Finally, inputting a one at state D is the most tragic of cases. By reaching D, we were so close to achieving the desired sequence, but that final misstep takes us all the way back to A. 
Why does this arrow not go to B? Because state B means that the most recent input was zero. Clearly, this arrow tells us that the most recent input was not zero. As a final check, make sure that every node has two arrows leaving it, since there are only two possible inputs at a time, either zero or one. It is easy to forget an arrow or two, so this check is important. From this point on, we continue the pattern that you should be getting used to now. Step two is to choose a flip-flop type. Let's go with JK. Step three will be the next state table. I want you to try that one yourself. Pause the video while you do. Here is the completed next state table. Take the time to compare your table with this one. I won't walk through every detail now, that's what the earlier videos were for, but I will remind you that present state and next state tables come straight from the state diagram, and that the flip-flop input columns apply the JK transition table. Step four is to find the simplest Boolean equations for all the flip-flop instructions, as well as the output. Remember that the inputs to the k-maps come from the present state columns of our table. Here we see the equation for j1, and now we see the equation for k1. Take a couple minutes to derive the remaining equations, j0, k0, and c. Here is the complete set of equations, shown with the next state table for convenience. Note that we can verify this is a Mealy machine by looking at the Z equation. The current input X appears in it, which makes it a Mealy. Now let's hop over to the simulator for the circuit implementation. We see the usual layout with state memory in these middle flip-flops, plus one more strobe D flip-flop to help with the output. The input X is listed up top. The next state logic is worked out down below, taken from our equations and the clock is replaced with the binary switch, just so I can more easily control it. Let's begin by clearing the memory through this reset switch. State code 00 indicates that we are at state A. As long as we input a 1, we are stuck at A. It doesn't matter how many times I flip the clock. But if we input a 0, we successfully begin the desired sequence, and so we move to B on the clock edge. The next sequential input is a 1, so let's set that and flip the clock. Now we're at state C. The next sequential input is a 1, so let's leave the input at 1 and flip the clock again. Now we're at state D. The last bit of our sequence is 0, so let's drop the input low, flip the clock, and voila! The output is high for the first time we have detected the desired sequence. Also notice that we return to state B, just as our state diagram tells us we should. At this point, we have tested our circuit a fair bit, but not completely. We still need to observe what happens with non-sequential inputs at states B, C, and D. Plugging in a zero at B keeps us at B, no matter how many clock cycles pass. Now let's plug in a 1 to move up to C. Here, an input of 0 returns us to B. Again, this matches the state diagram. Now at B again, an input of 1 moves us to C. Another one moves us to D. And now for the final misstep, we input a 1. This returns us all the way back to state A. At this point, we have fully tested all inputs at all states, and we found that the results match the state diagram. So, our design is complete. Recall that the only new idea in this lesson was the definition of a sequence detector and how that leads to a state diagram. We'll practice more of those state diagrams next video.